Welcome back to the channel and this time we've got a review of the Soviet T-37A light tank. Uh, this is um, from Hobby Boss and it's in 135th scale. So we'll take a minute to go through the instructions and um, it's a pretty simple kit this one and uh, here's the parts breakdown there so you can see there's not a huge amount of sprues it's mainly uh, being found in the wheels and the tracks. We've also got some photo etch um, details in this one as well. Starts with the running gear and then there is a, uh, a bath style a bathtub style uh, lower hole already sorted and ready to go so you just connect that up and um, again mainly working on the wheels then we're down into the tracks which are individual link tracks a few small bits uh, being added and then the upper hole goes on and a few small bits as well with uh, fenders and the tools and all of the, the the parts that plug gaps and doors and all of that sort of thing that's going on then the armor comes on here and a few photo etch parts as well just to add a bit of refinement Finishing off here again with some more covers and doors and then um, that looks like the exhaust muffler going on at the back there and then finishing off with the turret and that makes for a very small little tank hat which is quite nice. Now this is an amphibious tank which was a Soviet design um, utilising it it looks like it's got quite a lot of inspiration for some of the British designs at the time with the, the running gear that looks very reminiscent of that. There was a lot of that going on in the 30s with these um, tanks in different places. So the marking schemes, we've got a bit of glare on here I'm afraid. So here's the marking schemes, We've get, we uh, actually get four. Um, there's a little bit of glare I'm afraid but this is the first Soviet one and the decal placement is pretty much all um, just around the turret, so turret markings here. So there's the iconic Soviet um, early war markings there and pre-war. And then as we go over we've got a finished one which is a captured version from the uh, the winter war um, then we've got some camouflage versions as well which uh, look very different but these are both soviet as well so a lot of um, options there to give some diversity not just green overall so that's quite nice so starting off with the lower and upper hole as you can see this is actually uh, already in one piece and there's some very nice raised details all the way across here so we've got rivet and bolt head detail running right the way along the bottom of the chassis there's no ejector pin marks you've got detail on the underside that continues on the side walls as well a little bit plain obviously there's not much going on there and this is where the running gear goes on and then we've get, again got recessed panel lines but nice strong um, raised details with bolt heads and rivets there so that's looking really really good. Then we're on to a few other bits so because these are so small we'll actually put a couple together. So this is the turret so again we've got the main section of the turret is already um, moulded in one piece even with the front plate on there as well the mantlet. Um, all that needs to be done is you bring that to the uh, bottom of it so that's a very nice thing um, to have it is worth mentioning just how well packaged this kit was I've taken it all out of the bags but you can see here this is Hobby Boss have this wrapped around and uh, when we get onto the tracks you'll see that there's actually some foam in between the tracks everything was individually bagged it was very very well well packaged if that's uh, something you want to if that's something you sometimes worry about so it's good to know and there we go, uh, same detail runs, the uh, same level of detail runs all over this. We've got fine recessed panel lines and fine raised details as well where needed. And it, it looks really, really good all over. There's no um, ejector pin marks in places where you're going to worry about them. And everything looks really great. Then we're on to the running gear. So we've got sprockets and idlers and then four repeating sprues down here with the actual main um, wheels and bogies running gear as I've been calling it. So there we go, that's um, again extremely crisp, we've got spring detail on each of these. Uh, there's no problems that I can see across here, there's no ejector pin marks even on the inside of the uh, sprockets. So that's good. And again impressive stuff. And lastly for the sprues we've got the track. So as I say each one's got a section of foam separating it so you don't get any damage. Apart from that one that's because they came in two bags. So uh, that's how you get it. So that's very good. Um, again, the tracks are tracks. When it comes to um, tanks, you've got many. as many people want individual link tracks as do want rubber tracks. I mean, I'm glad to see these. It is a bit of a tedious task to put these together, as you can see. 
uh, is going to be one and a half, three and a half sprues for each side. Very small tracks, but they are only um, three uh, points to take off of the sprue, which are none of them are on the actual face. They're on the um, ends of the tracks, and there's no ejector pin marks or anything there. There's uh, good detail on the guide horns. It's just a case of cutting them off, switching off, and um, gluing them together. And when they're done, they're done. Then we've got the photo etch and decals. So that's stuck there on the, on the side where it doesn't matter. So there you can see the turret bands, which you get for the different marking options. Um, striking one is the, is the finished one with that blue and white for me. That looks pretty good. But you've got each, um, each version there for the Soviet ones as well. Again, carrier film looks very tight and they've got a kind of glossy finish, but Hobby Boss decals are um, pretty good. Then it's two um, photo etch frets as well, which does give a bit more refinement. So um, again, these are covered with a, a sticky plastic film on both sides to prevent bending. It's amazing stuff. So we've got a engine grill there, a few tie downs and straps. Um, that's a, a small piece of metal with raised bolt heads on it. And then on here we've got some doors and some end, uh, a cover, sorry, and some um, edges to the fenders as well. So really great stuff to get all of this in a kit. And this this box cost me thirteen pounds. So you know, make of that what you will. I'd say that's pretty good. So there you have it, that is the Soviet T-37A light tank from uh, Hobby Boss. And this is, there's a, a few versions of this one um, around. There's um, one, I don't know what the differences are. They're all uh, the small amphibious tanks, but one of them, the turret's on the other side. I think they're still T-37, but it might be a, a different designation other than A. Um, but yeah, very, um, very interesting kit. Great to pick up if you want a small sort of tankette. Um, I've heard... Some of my friends have made this one, I've heard that it goes together very well. Um, so a great little project to break up maybe some of the more in-depth things. So, um, like I said, I got this one on eBay, I think, and it was £13, so you can't go wrong with that. So, thanks for um, tuning in, and I hopefully that's been an enjoyable and informative video for you. If you like what you see, please consider giving the video a like. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next video.